Welcome, in this lecture we are going to discuss about top down design methodology of constant on off time control. So, here we will first talk about we will try to understand the voltage based constant on time digital control and the top down design methodology of constant on time digital voltage mode uh, control. So, here if we talk about voltage mode control constant on time. So, this is a actually converter and you know if we go for DCM then we can replace the turn of the switch then the body rod will act like a uh, you know conventional it will it will come into picture then it will become a conventional buck converter. So, here what we are doing in this voltage based architecture if you go to the original concept that means, if we go for you know typical diagram let us say we are talking about the output voltage this is our reference voltage. So, whenever the output voltage falls below then trigger this constant on time then it falls down and it triggers. That means, if the output voltage which is V 0 and this is our V ref whenever this intersect this point then what does it do actually your this modulator is turned on and it will on for a fixed duration which is our constant on time and we call it as a T on and then again it will tr get triggered here T on and this pulse if we take you know different color this is the pulse and this is our nothing but the gate signal that means, you can say this is the Q which is the signal and then you can put a dead time, but since we are talking about we are turning off the body diode I mean low side fed. So, you can just pass this signal to the high side switch. So, that means, our controllable gate signal it will be high when the output voltage will try to go below reference voltage and then your mono short timer will be triggered and so on. So, this is the you see here we are using a digital controller imagine for the time being this ADC speed is very very high and we are talking about this comparison between these two that means, this is the digital platform. So, this ADC data that means, n ref if n ref is greater than a d c data which is the digital version of the feedback voltage then this will go high. So, that means, we have discussed then you have to trigger or you have to turn on the monoshot timer. Now, when you try to compare two number in digital. So, this is in digital in in binary I would say in binary number. So, we can simply make n ref minus a d c data ok and if we take this difference then this difference which will come it m s b of this difference that means, the m s b of n difference this will give you the sign. If the MSB is 0 that means, your n rep is greater than ADC data then it will trigger the monoshot timer and as long as MSB of the n difference is 1 that means, your ADC data is higher that means, your output voltage is above the reference voltage. So, that means, though it is a comparator, but in digital two number if you want to compare you can simply subtract that and looking at the MSB you can do that. So, virtually this will look the whole system will look like a analog comparator you can imagine that analog comparator where you have a feedback voltage and as if you have a reference voltage because we are only dealing with the MSB of this error. So, we are all concerned about the MSB of the ADC data whether because it is the difference. So, you can pass the error voltage also and take the MSB. So, that means, if this is high or low then it will decide the monoshot timer. So, just for analogous 
analog implementation, if you take a very high sampling rate ADC, it will behave like a comparator and we are only talking about the data, the difference the MSB. But I will show you since our num sampling rate is finite, which we are using 25 megahertz. So, this will give a time resolution of 40 nanosecond and since we are not and this time period which is the effective switching period under PFM, TFM it may not be always may not be always integral multiple of 40 nanosecond. That means, the ADC sampling the quantizing the time or basically the sampling point, if they are not matching the switching frequency, then naturally there will be some uh, you know the mismatch between the sampling time and the switching time and this will lead to some jitter in the clock. You may not get the perfect switching frequency throughout. So, that may like vary some sometimes the T effect will be slightly higher lower. So, on average it will be T effective, but it may not be exactly true. This is because of the quantization or basically the sampling finite sampling of the ADC. But nevertheless, you can implement this logic digitally or you can do in analog also, but this whole circuit is digital domain, it is digital domain and we have discussed about this methodology in lecture 20 in our earlier imperial course. Now, we want to design this particular thing in constant on time. So, that means, we are taking from the ADC data to this date time, this complete block is realized by this block and it will be sitting inside the FPGA. So, how do you design this block and how do you design this monoshot timer on the off time? So, similarly this is voltage base. Now, if you do current base, we know that the current base, the voltage loop in digital that means, this starting point will be digital, it comes to a register, then current reference, then here again it goes to analog because it is D to a converter, it is going outside, but comparator data again come inside and this part is your FPGA. Because this constant modulator, dead time, these are all can be a digital circuit. But outside is the analog mix signal circuit like a ADC, DAC, analog signals and the gate signals which are going out, it is going to a gate drive. So, you want we can realize this in FPGA and we will be discussing the subsequent lecture detail. Now, here what we can do? Again we have to do an FPGA based implementation we can do, where this guy will be sitting in the digital platform. So, it can be microcontroller or it can be FPGA. In our case, we want to implement using Verilog HDL and prototype using FPGA. And the detail of this will be discussed with Verilog code in the subsequent lecture. Now, we want to do top down design methodology. How do you design this? Let us say we will start with the constant on time voltage mode control. So, how to design this block in Verilog HDL? So, the main module is your constant on time voltage mode control. It requires a clock generator because we need to generate the clock for the ADC and we have discussed in lecture number 8 that we need to generate clock for the ADC, DAC, switching frequency clock. Then we need a constant on time modulator. What is that? We will discuss and we will need a clock manager. What is a clock manager? We will also discuss, but these are the sub module which will come under the main module and now this goes into top down. So, that means, the main module will instantiate these are the sub module and we are going to discuss the Verilog implementation of this digital constant on time voltage mode control in the subsequent lecture, but we want to show the basic concept of constant, constant on time modulator. How does it work? So, we know that suppose if we have a trigger pulse and it is coming of a comparator this trigger pulse goes to a monoshot timer and this monoshot timer has a on time. This is our T on. Let us we are talking about the constant on time. 
So, the counter that means when you trigger this and we are talking about this enable signal. Whenever the enable high edge comes to this clock, so this will generate a Q signal which will be high for this fixed duration. After this fixed duration is over because it has a timer, once the T on counting is over then Q will go low. But we also know, okay, so first let us say constant on time modulator, how do you do? So, this enable signal and once this T on is over, so that means the T on should be implemented using a counter and this is exactly what is a free running counter. Whenever your trigger pulse come, that means the counter will start counting. That means we are generating this on time, let us say we have a this kind of short tooth. Whenever it reaches this height, it turns off. And we are we want to generate this time as a T on. So, we want to set a N on timer, it is a digital comment. That means when the counter hit the upper limit, or you can simply say it is a timer, whether it is on time or off time, I mean it will generate a time. So, it is a timer. So, timer is a set value. And what is the resolution of this clock? This clock is our T clock, that means the it is the time period of the high frequency clock. And what is that? Our high frequency clock is 100 megahertz. So, our T clock will be 10 nanosecond. So, that means you cannot generate any on time or off time resolution cannot be smaller than 10 nanosecond because that is the highest clock available. But yeah, if you go for IC implementation or even FPG also has hard IP core which can generate high frequency clock which can even boost the clock. It can be you know 500 megahertz or so, but we are only dealing with 100 megahertz clock. Now, if we want to generate T on to be let us say 2 microsecond, so we need to set this counter how much we want to generate T on to be 2 microsecond. So, it is in the order of 10 nanosecond. So, 2 microsecond 2 into 10,000 divided by 10 nanosecond, it will be how much? It will be 200. So, that means the end timer, the counter should start from 0 and it should reach to 199. So, that means 0 to 199, it will give 200, again it will reset. And this is exactly what is happening, but we should remember this on timer should not run when this guy go low. That means, whenever the Q timer that means, whenever you hit the upper limit that means, during this time the Q will be high that means, during this time I would say this Q will remain high that means, we will use a different color Q will remain high throughout this period, but when Q goes low then the timer should not be incremented otherwise it will generate false trigger. That is why you can see there is a you know invert logic that means, when this is high, so then your reset is disabled that means, when it is high this will be low, if it is high if this is 1 this will be 0, so this will be 0 and this is a active high reset signal. So, reset will be disabled, if the reset is disabled this free running counter will start counting and will count from 0 to 199 which is set by this timer because this is 199. Once this is over, counting is over, this reset pulse is coming and this positive trigger actually turn off this Q because there is a RS flip flop. Whenever the enable trigger comes, the set is enabled because that time reset was disabled, the timer this Q will become 1. If the Q is 1, this will be low, so your reset is disabled, so counter will start incrementing. When the counter hit the upper limit, the reset is high that is positive edge come and it will turn off this counter uh, flip flop Q becomes low. So, then Q becomes 0. So, then this guy will be 1 and if this is 1 then what will happen that means, I am talking about the second case when, when this when this is 0 this will be 1 this will be 1. So, reset is enabled 
then no counting will happen. So, it will simply disable. This is the bottom line. So, that means this block will generate a timer. Now, the next task we know that every constant timer modulator should have a minimum of time. We also know minimum of time and this is implemented by this logic. Again, this is a similar logic where again whenever this reset goes high that means your on time is elapsed that means this you will get a trigger pulse and this trigger pulse is nothing but this pulse that is the reset pulse because your counting is over. Then it will turn on this queue this is the another queue and now this queue is high this will be disabled so this will be 0 then this free running counter will start and this free running counter will count till the minimum value is reached because what we want to make sure up to this minimum value. So, I am just talking about this t min during this time this q must be low irrespective of any other trigger pulse come the q will not respond because we need to ensure that after the on time there should be minimum on time because this is practically they are in all commercial product. So, that means then when it hit the upper limit the reset goes high and this reset will turn off this q when the q is turn off then this will be 0 this will be 1. So, this counter will be disabled. Now, once you generate you see we are taking this output and we are inverting this logic which means during this time that means during this time particular instant this guy goes high and that is why you are talking inverting beyond this actually this is low that means during this off time this will be low as a result q out will be low and otherwise other duration it is high this is low so this will be high otherwise then it will simply pass the q output. So, the q output is basically the output of the monoshot timer during without I mean I mean outside the minimum duration, but when the minimum duration is enabled then q out is simply set to 0 and this is the logic that we are going to implement. So, in summary we have discussed the voltage bed constant on time control and we have discussed the top down design methodology of constant on time digital voltage mode control. In the subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the Verilog implementation of this particular logic. That is it for today. Thank you very much.